I'm Brianna Lopez. That's who you are listening to at the moment. And where am I right now currently? I'm at my home, my lovely home here in Pasadena, California. Home as in I live in a home, own a home. I do not, <laughs> just to clarify, so y'all don't think I'm out here balling in Pasadena. Currently, right now, I am in a lovely, lovely, lovely space. Deciding to create a docu-series, I think really boils down to me knowing deeply that I really have some phenomenal shit going on inside of me. And I've spent so many years tiptoeing and releasing, whether it's me meeting people in person or teaching or working with people, I've only given bits and pieces of myself. Most of me is still a mystery to even the people around me because of just how I operate. I'm doing this because it's time. I'm doing this because I'm finding the confidence to, I have the confidence now to say what it is that I need to say without feeling like I don't know what I'm talking about. Another thing is I need to start creating digital real estate for myself because that's the industry that I'm in, that's the field I'm a part of, why not? You know, I have incredible things to say, but more importantly, my experiences in life and what I've been given, um, I think is important for other people to, to know and to, to I guess, maybe pick, pick it apart themselves to find pieces that may be missing within their own selves. So um, it's new to me. I'm not a pro. I still have a lot to figure out, but I want to pursue this because I've done it for other people, I don't see why I can't do it for myself, so. I think the issue with me is the term content. Um, because at any point in time before the term content came to be, you just took your camera and you made moving pictures regardless if it was commercial, if it was a short film, if it was a full length film, if it was you know, a promo, it didn't matter, it wasn't. I get cringy now at the term content just because of the emphasis from, I don't even want to say the industry, but just everyone at this point to flush out this thing called content. So I have to accept the fact that I do exist in a space now where I am considered a content creator. Do I like it? No. Is it going to take a while to for me to accept that? Absolutely. How do I feel now that I am creating content as someone who creates content <laughs> for work. I think based off what I'm experiencing today that I like this, but I never called myself a content creator. I called myself a filmmaker or a photographer. I never went around saying, hey, I make content, even though now, a few years later, after, after I've decided to do this, people will understand more of what I say when I say content versus filmmaker because I am not making full length films at this point yet in my life so technically I am a content creator because people hire me to create or make content for them and now on the flip side I have to be the one sitting here creating content I think if I allow myself to continue to flow with it it'll merge properly in the sense that I won't feel no type of way from either end of the spectrum meaning I won't feel no type of way if I'm hired to create content for someone or if I'm responsible for creating content myself. I'm starting to really be okay with it. I wasn't for a while, maybe because, you know, I was born in 88. I don't think that that actually matters. I think a lot of people who started off in the art space and the visual art space have a problem with the term content. But I think we're easing up to it a bit because it's just a general word for much, 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 or many, many, many things under that word, and I need to accept that. I'm not gonna say that how I approach my new clients or potential clients now is a, a new way of doing things. When I first moved to Los Angeles in 2015, the number one thing that I had on my side was my ability to actually talk to people and not be afraid of human beings. I'm not afraid of no human being. I don't, I'm not intimidated by humans. And so that has always allowed me to, I don't want to say be aggressive, but just be like, hey, I'm here, this is me, what's up, let's talk, let's connect. I think because industries, industries change, things change, especially with social media becoming much bigger over the years, 
as in comparison to that time, all of our focus, my focus as well, shifted into it predominantly being about the internet and social media. So that changed my natural format of getting clients and networking, which is person to person and just kind of understanding each other that way. I went to the internet to try to find, and I've done great over the years, but now that at, as things are completely different, I know in my heart going back to the root, which is what's natural to me, is what's going to continue to help me win. And it's extremely important I'd rather spend time focusing my energy on connecting with the right people versus trying to basically throw stones in an ocean in comparison to social media. I believe social media is a great back, a backup, a back end. You meet someone, they like, they like what you're doing, you like what they're doing, you exchange social media information, and then they can maintain a relationship with you through that. But I need to go back to actually starting off my business relationships with actually getting to feel someone person to person so it's not that my approach is new i'm just going back to what i used to do back in the day before i started to focus all of my attention on approaching people through social media i think ai is both a great thing and a hindrance depending on how it's being used and what it's being used for i'm just going to speak on behalf of me i have the type of mind where I may hear something first and because of my biases or my own programming, I may dismiss the thing or not be willing to investigate, investigate it more deeply. Now I'm 100% aware and I think we're all aware that no matter how much we get involved with AI, there's still a human component and an element that just cannot be replicated. The soul cannot be replicated no matter how deep it goes or no matter how many people who subscribe to it, use it, and, and believe it. It's totally fine if that's what you want to do, that's what you into, but not everyone is going to subscribe to a more robotic, mechanic way of, of looking at things. Now, as far as functionality and being able to use AI for more proficiency, I'm all for it. My great dear friend, J-Mo, who is behind the camera here, is, in, is introducing me to different AI tools that will help versus hinder, and I think, for me, it's a plus. I'm a photographer, you know, I make, uh, I produce video work and the conversation is always about, well, AI is doing this and AI is doing that. Has it made a difference? Absolutely. You can see um, photo the photography industry took a huge um, hit with AI, especially I believe in the commercial space, fashion, um, different things that, be, that can be created. I was watching a video a while ago that was talking about what parts of photography will kind of continue to evolve even with AI being here. And the one thing that he said that I remembered anyway was event photography. You cannot replicate event photography no matter how advanced AI get. And like a light bulb went off in my head because many people don't know, but I do a ton of event photography. It's actually the bulk of my work and so when I thought that I was like oh I'm good then and so it's helping me change my focus from thinking that oh it's over with da, da, da. I've actually already been working in a space within photography that still cannot rely on AI to sustain itself so with that being said I'll continue to pursue event photography while this still figures itself out I believe the entrepreneur rat race is this idea that if you're not on a daily basis, an hourly basis doing something that is directly associated with your business, then you're a failure. It's as simple as that. And of course, I know it's all in our minds, but we live in a society in America where that's our programming. And so now as I continue to grow wiser and understand the programming that was given to me versus what I prefer to prescribe to, I'm now in the space where I'm checking myself on a daily basis. Before I even get out the bed, I'm checking myself on my thoughts. I'm checking myself on even 
moving for no or being busy for no reason which I tend to do a lot I'm a person that feels like I need to be doing something all the time even though I can relax I can go be in nature I can go on hikes I can spend a lot of time alone that doesn't take away from the from the fact that sometimes in the back of my mind I'm always thinking like oh I could be doing this I could be doing this next da, da, da. regardless of all of that I think currently the space that we're in even on a global scale I'm trying to stop talking about other people and what I think other people are doing. I'm going to refrain it. Go back to me. I feel like currently in this space and time that the focus is spirituality and not the lofty, loft, you know, burning sage and crystals, none of that shit. I'm talking about full on who am I? Why am I doing this? Who told me I had to do this? And if this is the thing that I should be doing? So... The whole rat race entrepreneur thing, I don't think it's going to stop because we live in a capitalist society that's going to constantly push for the human to work so that it can get as much out of the human as possible. Totally aware of that. Now that I have that solid awareness, I can go back. I was going to say go back in time, not necessarily go back in time, but start digging through my programming of why I think it's okay to operate this way, which I know in my heart it's not. So now I'm finding a balance where the entrepreneur rat race is still here, but I'm not allowing it to overpower my life. How I get back into being in a grounded space is first really, really checking my thoughts. I think that's the main thing. I noticed that if I wake up in the morning and I just kind of go and I don't actually have a conversation with myself, that's where it starts. So in through the years, my practices have changed. I used to wake up in the morning and just go for a walk. That'd be the first thing I do and that'd get me into a space clear enough where I could come, come back home, do my thing and feel like I'm balanced and grounded. Now the world is in a totally different space now. So we have to adjust and do different things. So now the main thing literally is just checking my thoughts. There's no specific thing that I do anymore. Like I've been meditating more, but it's not consistent. I hike, it's not consistent. I go on walks every day, but it's not consistent. The main thing that's consistent for me and how I can get back to balance is literally talking to myself and being like, bro, that's not you. That's not you talking. These 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 words that I'm hearing that are telling me to do X, Y, and Z or I need to do X, Y, and Z isn't actually me. So currently that has been my most number one. I don't even want to call it a spiritual practice because there's no separation between the physical and the spiritual. It's just what it is. Like, So my current practice is literally monitoring to the best of my ability every thought that passes through my mind. And that really actually brings me a ton of balance and, uh, and feel like I'm grounded. Like once my voice me the real me comes is the is the more dominant voice that i hear oh i'm it's great my day is easy i'm flowing i do what i have to do as i'm supposed to do it if i decide i don't want to do work today then i don't if i decide i want to go to the beach today then i go without feeling like my life or my career is in danger because i chose to spend a day or two doing something that actually feels really good to my psyche to my body to my just overall well-being. If there's anything I think I would want people to know about me is that there is no one size type of ordeal here. I don't want to only be known as a photographer. I don't only want to be known as a workshop instructor or a teacher or a filmmaker because it's so much bigger than that my personal message to people is honestly is like we're a plethora of everything you know what I mean we're literally a plethora of everything and the real work the real job is to dismantle the programming of our thinking so that we can actually enjoy and exist in the plethora I'm learning this myself I have a lifetime to learn this I don't expect to know it ASAP but that's the one thing that I need people to know is like we are truly there's so much more than titles and labels and oh I do this I do that it works to keep this physical thing going but it goes beyond that and that's what I'm here to kind of open up and break down a bit